So welcome to another Wardy's Waffle Farm update. A lot going on this week, as always, at the minute. We've had a big week with the media. I had BBC Radio Lincolnshire uh, come here to do a piece about the impact of the weather uh, and, uh, and the rain that we've had this week. We've had seven millimetres of rain last Wednesday, which... Um, wasn't a lot but it has done an awful lot of good from uh, some of the sugar beet you can see uh, oh you can't quite see for the sun but it's made a good uh, difference to the sugar beet um, and also BBC uh, East Midlands they came to do a report on uh, food security climate change the weather um, and fertilizer prices um, and also uh, they touched on a new bill that the government have just passed uh, which could be an absolute game changer in this feud security uh, situation and problem that we've got here. And that is to do with plant breeding, uh, that they are finally going to allow uh, gene editing or looking at gene editing. Uh, I can't just remember the name of the bill. It's only just been announced yesterday. We'll have a bit more on that. I'll do a bit more research and uh, just comment on that a bit more next week. But that could be a game changer in helping our food security. Anyway, on to, on to this week's update. Um, we also have completed our... Uh, um, uh, nitrogen applications on all the all the crops this week we had a massive day um, and, and got that all finished also Tom Land from Agri came with a N sensor and that's a handheld tester um, to test the chlorophyll content in the leaves uh, of the crop to see what how much nitrogen we actually need for them to achieve the optimum yield so we have a quick look at that as well that's really interesting um, also we uh, have a product on trial from Agri um, that apparently is meant to uh, um, reduce the chance of scorch of liquid nitrogen so we mix that with some nitrogen in the bowser um, and we look at that um, also we what else have i done this week also um we also visited local farm that won uh, a Malting Barley um, Award with Molston Cause. This is the uh, group that I'm part of uh, with the barley we grow that goes to Burton-on-Trent Brewery. So we go around their farm. And also, if you're interested in how we record data from the sprayer, applications, everything used, and time to start and time stop, I have about five minutes looking at that, how we record everything now on a memory stick, and it's all transferred from there into the field record program uh, called Gatekeeper um, that we use. Um, and also we have a bit of a, a detailed look at the direct drilling plots with uh, Steve Corbett and Justin from, from Agri. And we'll look into a few plant counts and look at the plots which are improving all the time. Anyway, without any more for me, uh, let's crack on with this week's update. Apologies for the wind. I haven't got my microphone work with me at the moment. But the roof is just going around. We're just leveling the lanes. It's a bit of a homemade uh, level grader. takes the middle out always ends up high in the middle it just takes the middle out and uh, drops it into the outside so I've got Sharon here from BBC Radio Lincolnshire at the moment today looking around the farm hello Sharon and you're just about to send an interview we've just done is that going into the news um, yeah I think it will go today because it's about rain and yeah. the fact it's raining and you're still complaining and people <laughs> are wondering why farmers still complain so that'll go today obviously I'm here to do a wider piece about food security mm. so which will probably go sometime next week yeah so, yep. I'm gonna get a picture of you before with that shovel with that shovel we've just been looking at how dry it is here yeah. and I was just showing Sharon uh, this soil here and I've got a little little uh, coal shovel I had into my vehicle but here you can just see there still the rain has gone in a little bit but it's still very dry underneath here look at the soil still really dry and hard here you can see there and uh, just sort of showing Sharon how rain uh, impacts and she was asking me how does it make a difference to our to our farm and to our crops and, and will there be food shortages I'm just looking at the weather forecast so rain today and I, I can't see no. Oh, possibly some on Monday next week. Oh, true. wow, thank you. And how many millimetres? 10, 15 or half? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't th I don't think they tell me that. No, I know, this is the problem. <laughs> but uh, but we're just looking down this field of sugar beet at the minute. It's looking quite good at the moment, which is good from the little rain we had on Friday night. But yeah, it's great. I, I always love doing things for, for Sharon, our local radio station. It's great to, to sort of highlight what we're doing here for the environment and how the weather does have a serious impact on, on things. So I suppose you didn't realise you thought the rain we were having would be doing some good. 
I, I thought it was. So all the way coming out here, I thought, well, he's complaining. It was dry. It's fine now. <laughs> Get here and he's still complaining. Still complaining. Yeah, well, that, that's farmers and that's me, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, so yeah, Sharon's just sent this off interview off. We've just done. Have you sent it to the studio? It's gone down. It's gone down. So yeah. it'll be on the news. It'll be on the news probably this afternoon. Mm. And I imagine that the drive time program will probably play a couple of minutes yeah, of it. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Great, great. Thank you. It's Tuesday afternoon. The sun is shining but we have had seven millimetres of rain. Yay, fantastic. We are now in a field of sugar beet and this has responded fantastically from it. Just look at that, growing superbly. If I just hold the camera down, you can just see some of these large plants, how they look. Really, really good. When you look down the row and down there, really pleased with how this uh, this crop's turning out at the minute and the seven mil of rain we've had has done a lot of good so uh yeah um the spring beans there at the other side of my discovery they're looking really good we'll just have a quick walk over those as well but um rainfall up to now this month uh is about i think 10 millimeters we had five millimeters uh four millimeters last week um in two or three dribs and drabs that didn't really do much um, but a little bit of good, but not a lot. But this one's really done much, much, much more uh, good. And uh, when you look, my boots, when you look there, nice and sticky, which is fantastic. So looking at these beans, yeah, looking down the row here, got some uh, lovely spring beans now. These are really growing now. You can just see the size of the plants there. And of course, we've got the lovely sewage sludge here. So yeah, great. Uh, um, rain this morning still very very dry two inches three inches down but this will do the crop the power of good so Tom Land is here today from Agri and is using the end tester machine just to see what uh, how much more nitrogen we need on these crops and you have to sample 30 of these throughout the the crop and this is how you do it you sample 30 leaves and that's it bleeps on the phone and that shows you recommended so just looking at this machine Tom the end tester um, it's simple and, and all that does is, is just test the chlorophyll content yeah, of the yeah, leaves. Yeah, so it's just, just measuring, picking up any variation across the field um, yeah. and then gives you an average yeah. uh, of, the, of the measurements you've picked yeah, up across yeah. the field. And, that's well. a, and that machine, uh, it's a Yara uh, end tester that's the, and it's linked to an app on your phone. Yeah, which is, which is something called App Farm yeah. where you can store all your data and things like that. For Tom, you've busy, you've just done the 30 tests across this field and that shows it's logged the 30. Uh, what's what's next stage so basically this is saying how much nitrogen this crop needs uh, from the data we've collected in terms of chlorophyll levels and yeah. plant uh, but we've also told it our yield aspiration uh, and also our sns value as well so, yeah so it knows we're sitting on a reasonably high residual soil nitrogen we're wanting ten and a half tons of yield we also have told uh, this that um, we've already applied oh, 140 flying. Yeah. kilos of nitrogen already. So to finish this crop off, this is saying 25 kilos a hectare. Uh, and when we, when we did this uh, two weeks ago, it was showing a lot more than that, so wasn't it? Yeah, that's right, which shows it hadn't got hold of the nitrogen then, but it has now. So you're very fortunate to have had some wet weather <laughs> to enable that uptake. So that, that's a you know that's something I think we'll probably go with, won't we? We will we'll yeah. probably will be going back in with about 30 kilos. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah. And 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 looking at that um this one um I'm trying to think now whether this one had sewage sludge or not last autumn. I can't remember what on that bit yeah. of paper whether um, it did. I can't remember what, whether this, this one did. Oats, wasn't it? Yeah, it was yeah. after oats this one. But yeah. but obviously if it had sewage sludge, that's all taken into account. Um, and when we're looking at the crop development here, really it ought to be on before now because I've actually got the flag leaf out um, in here. Uh, that is the last leaf there. So we got that. Uh, let me just peel that back. That's the last leaf. So we're going to be very careful and not to scorch that one. Um, but we should be all right now. It's got the new adequate moisture and things. And so if we get on with this, it should be all right. It's come, it's come together a lot more since we last did it two weeks ago. Yeah, around. yeah, it so, has. Uh, it has when you look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've now finished out in the field doing the final check with the end tester to see how much nitrogen it says the crop needs to reach its uh, potential we now need to go into the office onto gatekeeper the field record program that we use to then create a plan that then reuben can put in the sprayer uh, to go and actually put this final application of liquid nitrogen onto the wheat crops 
So this is the application and the system we use. Quite a lot of farmers use Gatekeeper. There are various ones around, but uh, this one's a, a farm plan made by a farm plan. And so here we're looking at creating the plan. Uh, and I'm calling it the final nitrogen on winter wheat. So we've created the plan. We then need to go into the bottom there and create job. That brings that screen up. We then need to add field record job down there. And then we need to then pick the fields we want. So there's all the list of the winter wheat fields we've got. So we need to pick the ones at the various rates and uh, and put them across uh, across here into this next table. So this is the list that we had uh, in the, out in the fields. And the fields marked with a little orange dot are the fields that we had uh, the soil nitrogen or nitrogen content tested uh, one or two over the page there and they're the ones that um, Tom has done with the end tester and then we're going to group these together because those fields uh, with the orange marks on uh, that's sort of uh, uh, if you like that's one field of probably six or seven fields that's been treated the same so we don't uh, test the soil nitrogen of every field but just a selection and then we use that result uh, to go into uh, fields um, that's been cropped the same and had the same crop the last few years. So this is the crop, uh, the figure that the end tester says we need. So that particular field there, 36 acre strag, it says the crop needs another 60 kilos per hectare for that crop to achieve 12 tonnes per hectare, because that's the figure we've put in uh, for most of the wheats on the heavy land. Whereas uh, you can go further down the page and you see that one, um, Osier's small, it says that the we need 50 kilos to reach potential. So I'm just going to alter all these figures now and group them all together for every field and then transfer that onto, onto Gatekeeper. So I've just spent a few minutes and filled in all the rest of the fields. So I've grouped them together. So the orange dots, uh, remember they're the ones that we had the uh, nitrogen uh, soil test, the NMIN soil test. So I've grouped fields together and uh, now we've got the full plan of where we're going to be and how much we've got the final application is. And those figures are the 50 and the 58 of the uh, kilograms per hectare. So I'll now uh, build the plan on Gatekeeper and then that will be all ready for Reuben in the sprayer. So this is where I select the fields and these group of fields all want the same rate. So that's all set up. I've just done that ready. Click OK. That's got all that batch of fields there done. And then the product. I've selected the product already, we're on 30% nitrogen there. So put that across there. And the application rate of the fields we've just seen is 128 kilograms per hectare, sorry, liters per hectare, which equates to 50 kilograms per hectare of nitrogen. And click OK there. And then that now is the plan. Click uh, save. And then looking back at the sheets here, what? The figures on the right uh, is the total amount of nitrogen we've already applied. So if we look at one with an orange dot there, 36 acre strag, follow that across. It's already had 148.69 kilograms hectare of nitrogen. It's going to get another 60. So that's going to take it to just over 200. And it's very interesting because normally that field is one after sugar beet. It's winter wheat after sugar beet. And normally that field would have had 220 kilograms a hectare so don't forget the end tester that tom has uh, used and uh, gone around all the fields for us just to assess the crops potential and the chlorophyll content in the leaves don't forget that that takes into account all applied nitrogen up to date including the nitrogen from the sewage sludge so it's a really interesting and really efficient way of che uh, checking and making sure that our crops aren't over fertilized and with fertilizer where it is this year obviously that's vitally important but it's going to be really good for us because we are going to have um, amount of fertilizer from this year carried over into next year uh, and this year if you remember I, I paid a, a reasonably cheap um, figure for our fertilizer this year our average price is about 280 pounds a ton um, and so we're going to be carrying that over going to I'm going to be carrying three uh, tankfuls over I think three fifty thousand litre tanks so uh, there's about 70 tons in a tank um, and so uh, three sevens of 21 so 210 tons of fertilizer will be carried over into next year which obviously will make next year's average price of fertilizer cheaper because at the minute we're not quite sure where it's going to be but it's going to be a lot more than what we've paid this year i've got bbc east midlands here today doing a piece about the weather and uh, the fact we had a whole day of rain yesterday and just had 
uh, seven millimeters of rain and we've just dug a few plants and crops up uh, and you can just see that that rain is virtually gone even though the plants will have taken it up. Uh, we're in a field of sugar beet at the minute and the problem we've had with the lack of moisture uh, is that we've got a little bit of herbicide damage from uh, the crop and the moisture that was in the ground at planting uh, was quite deep so we actually put the crop in the ground and planted the seed deeper than we'd normally have done and if we just look at the, uh, the seed you can see here the deep one up the soil is, is really warm which, which is good and if we look here at the seed growing the soil here is slightly damp time to change the wheels on the sprayer this will be for the last time you can see They've actually worn quite a bit these up. I think they've been on two sprayers, if not uh, if not three. But this is the last time these will be on. And then putting the narrow row crops on, but it means altering the axles and uh, the track rod ends, which is always a bit of a job. When you look in here, we need to oil it and grease it to, to make them slide in and out easier, but it is always a bit of a job. Put the forklifts under the back end, like that to lift it up. And then use one of these wheel changes it makes the job a lot easier. Found a bit of an issue underneath here. Just changing the wheels, we've got a big crack. You can see through there, so that needs plating up and welding. Is it the same on the other side, Tom? Yeah, it's not as bad, but it is bad. So yeah, so that needs doing. We've already did one of these um, last year. done that already last year and plated the other side but it will need there's the plate so it'll need that doing this time of course as well as the Maddie 2 we've got axle stands all underneath there ready just in case in case the hydraulics fail but of course they've all got these load sensing valves and things on that that hopefully prevents that but you just never know so yeah it's uh, nine years old this sprayer and uh, the new one will be coming end of the year. So the uh, rattle gun, air guns. Bloody heavy to use that one. And here are the cracks. You see that there. And then going to put a plate on that it's also bent the bracket there that, that holds the cables on the pipes We're just trying this product for Agri. Apparently, um, they say it has potential to uh, limit and uh, minimize scorch of uh, liquid fertilizers. It's an organic product that uh, some organic farmers use. Um, this is what it is. It's high in sugars and it stimulates plant growth and root growth and uh, helps the plant fight off disease as well, I think. So we're gonna try it. We're gonna mix it into the browser here. We've got uh, nearly a browser full of liquid fertilizer. It needs to go on at 10 liters a hectare. So we're gonna mix it in with this so that when we apply and put this into the sprayer for the fertilizer, uh, to, uh, so the sprayer puts liquid fertilizer on, then it's gonna have this TerraFed product mixed in with it as well. And we'll got about 100 hectares worth here. So we'll see if it has any effect uh, on the fields when uh, in the next few days after we put the nitrogen on. So Tom's up the top of the bowser. I'm just gonna lift this up. And I've already slackened off the top. That's a thing we often forget with these. If you don't slacken off the top, it sucks the uh, in when you empty the liquid out the tank. Uh, I've just lowered that in the tank. We just need, this is going in the front tank of the Bowser. Uh, it needs 290 litres of this product in there to mix in. And then the rest going in the back tank. We've taken a bit of fertiliser out the front, so there's, I think, 4,500 litres in the front. And there's about 
about uh, 11,500 in the back. Just move around into the back tank now. Just Tom's just putting the spout on and just getting it set up. We'll just go up and have a look. At it's an awful brownie, sludge looking product. And what does this smell? Beauty of the handrail here for safety. So that's the product. Got quick release couplings on the bottom of this IBC. For when we use them for fertilizer, when we used to grow rape, which we're probably gonna go back to growing a few fields this year. We're just putting some fertilizer out the bowser into here to try and thin this down. And you can see it's like, like chocolate. But we're using a smaller pipe we've got because the uh, larger three inch pipe wouldn't go in the top of the tank so we have a reducer on that to bring it down and then use the valve to put the air from the tank through and clear the pipe yeah that's it that's cleared the pipe with the air from the air brakes just slosh this about just to mix that up so I'm just going to lift it back up over the top of the bowser. Put the pipe back on. That's it, really empty. That's it, that's the tank all empty. Just take it round now to the wash pad and it wants washing out, otherwise it'll settle out and then we can use it again for something else. Just looking down from the uh, village, from the top of the hill, down to the field where we had our direct drilling demo on April the 6th. And you can just see the variation showing through there. It's the, uh, not the dark green field in the bottom of the picture, it's the one just above. You can see the stripes and the lights and dark colours of the crops coming through and that's the various uh, machines putting the spring barley in the ground. The field in front by the way that is dark green uh, is direct drilled spring oats and yes direct drilled with the free flow. We're just applying the last of the nitrogens all on the winter wheat crops this, we're on liquid nitrogen here, liquid fertiliser. This particular field is receiving 60 kilograms a hectare of nitrogen to take it to around 200 kilograms a hectare in total. And all those final rates, remember, have been decided by the end tester that you saw um, a few minutes ago. And it's quite breezy again today, but uh, this is the benefit of liquid fertiliser that just spotted a black grass plant. I've nearly got caught with a sprayer. There we go. So the benefit of liquid when it's windy like this is it's accurate spreading right to the end of the boom as we can see there. So yeah just looking at black grass. Here we have a plant and there is the seed lots of seed heads in that you can see there all those are seeds there'll be probably 200 seeds in that in that ear and then all these will turn these stems will turn into plants but generally we're not too bad at the minute but it's a bit early here for these plants to come out but we'll have a look at black grass uh, in another weekly update i've got steve and justin here in the field from agri just across here, I'm just going to go and see him for the first time this morning after we've had the rain. Seven millimetres of rain, but just look how it's soaked up and how dry it is. Just look at that, my boots are clean. Just staggering to think that the rain, it rained all day yesterday. We only had seven mil, but it's done the world of good on these plots. Green up, but yeah, we're going to have some very interesting data. Justin's just going back to get some bags to put some samples in for some tissue samples. 
So, Steve, you're on the film. What are you on with now? You're digging a few holes. You're digging for gold or water or what? What we've done. Yeah. Each of the drills. So we've got ten different drills across the region. That's now. yeah. We've come to the area where you drilled in the morning. Yes. It is the drill on its own, straight into the stubble and the soil conditions that we got that we know are challenging in terms of fairly moist at the time we drill. Yep. No straw rake. The straw rake you can see. Right you can there. see there the line. That is incredible. That line right in the middle of the screen now. That's the straw rake where it's darker green and this side is no straw rake so it's made a big difference there. And the straw rake after drilling has just allowed that nitri nitrogen process to start Andrew so we've, we've got a, certainly a difference there. Yeah. This is an interesting one in terms of so each drill I'm just digging out and looking to see because to me the clues often are the plant roots. Yeah. So where I've dug out this this particular drill here there's the surface here the drill has cut through and made a slot and this particular drill creates a bowl shape yeah so it's a, a bowl shape in here where the seeds are put into you can see the seeds sat in that bowl shape unfortunately then because the next bit of soil further down it's pulled across and smeared this a little bit that next bit of soil is, is offering resistance so the spring barley roots have started to grow but they're swirling round and round we've got roots that have gone round and round in circles here because they're trying to get through that next layer yeah they want to get through now some of them i've found are just starting to break through these white roots here are just starting to break through but they're using a lot of energy to get through that yeah. next layer so i'm just looking at each drill to see what it's done in terms of the root depth whether the roots have expanded, what seeds we've got emerged, they're the sort of scores we're looking at. Brilliant. So Reuben and Tom had a cracking day yesterday. They managed to get all the final dose of nitrogen, liquid nitrogen on our winter wheat. So that was over 800 acres. So a huge achievement. They started around 7 a.m. in the morning and I think finished around about 9 p.m. And that was helped hugely by, uh, by Tom on the bowels of backing uh, Reuben up with the sprayer. So uh, yeah, massive achievement. Now, if we were to do that with bags, uh, instead of liquid, then no way would we have been able to achieve that volume of work rates. And also it was windy as well, a bit breezy, and we would have had to have stopped in the day. So that's the benefit of liquid fertilizer. Anyway, all the data um, is on the screen and I'll just show you how we get that out the sprayer. So to get the data off the screen, we put a memory stick in the USB uh, terminal, which I've already done, which is, is that one. And then we go into the jobs tab, which is up there and go export actually just um exit this is the job that ruben hasn't done yet so this is one remaining you can see 11 fields remaining at some headlands so that's the one outstanding but the ones he's done if you go on to export go on to backups and find the job that uh, we're looking for which is final nitrogen on the winter weeks there we go this one job 267 and then 13th of may you can see it was done click export and that's taken all the data so that is liters used on individual fields and total liters used uh, onto the memory stick from the sprayer screen including uh, the date and the uh, start and stop time uh, there we go and that's all now completed so we need to take this out now and take the memory stick out and and then we'll there we've got the stick and then we'll then put that into the office computer and transfer that into gatekeeper uh, and it'll be done really really quickly much better than a manual version on paper that we used to use so here's the memory stick we're going to now put it into the uh, computer there it's got all the data on yeah it's found the report or the application um report in there just minimize that now go up to the top here in device devices click device sync there and look it's got house and field master in it it recognizes it's the sprayer that's gone on there so click in local exchange there and we want to import it into the screen so it's just looking for that and it's importing the application maps there we are that's found them the globe here in the screen here this says it's done the fields and this is a field boundary map so it's also mapped all those fields which we'll look at in a second so if we just scroll up you can see here all the various jobs we've got job one uh where well, i think you can see job one two there so we'll just click in um a load of these jobs we'll go in job two actually for a start 
So I've just ticked those boxes. That's the last one. There's 12 jobs there in job two. So I'll then click the import with preview tab there. And then you can see it whirling around, generating and starting to bring it in. With having 12 fields uh, to bring all the data in, it takes a bit of time to do that. But you can see there's each field, the date it was done, start time, stop time, all that's done from the screen inside the sprayer. Somehow it doesn't hold the operator and the growth stage that I did in the plan. So if I just click the top one there, click Ruben, it brings them all down the line. Click the growth stage there and it was, uh, where are we down here for growth stage 37 when we applied it. Click that. Click OK, and that brings that in. So that's all those batch of fields. There's the total volume of liquid fertilizer um, used in all those fields. That was the application rate, 154 litres a hectare, which is 60 kilograms a hectare of nitrogen. And there's the product and everything. So all I need to do now is click Save down in this bottom corner, when I can find the mouse there. Click that and that whirs around and that will then take it into the individual field records. Also, just noting here, also at the start when we create the plan, uh, I've got it set up with the cost of the sprayer and this is costing us £3.50 a hectare to spray and that was with our sprayer that's nine years old. And honestly, if you remember, we bought that really, really cheaply, that sprayer at very good value nine years ago. So that's why it's only costing us three pound 50 a hectare to spray. Maybe with the fuel now, it maybe be slightly more than that. It may be four pound a hectare, but I haven't updated that. Obviously when we spray, get the new sprayer here, it will be significantly more than that. So I've now just gone into the uh, field's individual record just to show that it's brought it in. And this is off one of the plans that we've just brought in. And you can see there, 30% nitrogen liquid. That's what I've got it set up at in the, in the stock. Uh, 13th of uh, May. And you can see there, 155 litres a hectare it's applied. Uh, it was set at 154 litres a hectare. It was just applied slightly more. These are the costs, applied cost per hectare. Uh, per field cost per hectare, total cost for the for the field. So uh, that's the field record. So uh, click on to uh, fertilizer at the top there, and that goes into all the nitrogen that we applied, um, or and any products here you can see applied to date. And if we look at the nitrogen column, which is across here, total nitrogen applied to this crop is 188 kilograms a hectare. It's had 31 and. Uh, kilograms a hectare of nitrogen in biosolids so that's our sewage sludge we used before we planted the crop we allow for that and reduce the amount of applied fertilizer to compensate and that's the three applications so 48 kilograms the first time 48 kilograms the second time and then nearly 60 uh, we put on uh, yesterday and so that's the how we apply it and that's how we keep a record and the cost of all field records and how we apply products to each crop and while I'm at it, just showing you, this is a summary of all the uh, products we've applied to the crop, whether it's a herbicide at the top there, adjuvants, organic manures, which is our sewage sludge, of course, trace elements, insecticides, fertilizers, um, and total applied products here. So we're already up to now on this field, it's 48 acres and we've spent 7,600 pounds on it. And, that, and that's uh, all input cost fertilizer, all those above above here. That's not including application, which is the cost of the sprayer, and it's not including establishment of the field either. Um, and so, and of course, it all shown a minus figure with the brackets because of no crop sales or no harvest data to that field yet. Just arrived with Rhonda at a local farm at Mark and James Islands near Rawspey at Sleaford, and we've got a Molston Cause uh, evening on. They've just won Grower of the Year for the malting barley they produce that goes to Burton on Trent. So, we're going to have a look around some of the crops and then have a bit of a barbecue afterwards. So the rotation here will be sugar beet, uh, spring barley, winter barley, spring barley. Occasionally we'd have a vining peas if we're trying to extend the sugar beet rotation. Um, uh, very occasionally, and you'll see when we come back just in some winter barley, uh, we, uh, we occasionally put a wheat crop in, but only out of necessity sometimes if, if the autumn hasn't gone with us uh, and we've got behind or whatever in uh, uh, the autumn drilling. Um, 
in terms of fertilizer, generally, you know, we will use anywhere between 110 and 130 kilos of nitrogen on our winter barley, uh, spring barley, sorry. Uh, and this will just get a two spray approach. It was actually sprayed last week. Does so anyone know what it is that shouldn't be there? Anyone who knows all their uh, mixtures? Dobcelia. <laughs> well, there's one or two right here. Yeah. It's a phacelia. We, we've always had this as a, a, as a, as a, 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 a bit of a wildlife, yeah, and then the rest of it was just a small bit of a variable. And, uh, right, we're going to loop round back to the yard. Please feel free to ask whatever you want. That's it, that's the farm walk over with, learning from Mark and James all about their barley. Now we're talking. Barbecue now, so that should be good. We've been asked to get some beer to take home. What have we got? Doombar and... Doombar. Doombar. <laughs> yes. Doombar and Doombar. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed that. As you can see, lots going on as always. And uh, please click like and subscribe and come back with any questions. And we'll see you next week.